Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Laws of Logs. Now, why do we need logs? Well, let's just think about why we need different functions in maths. If I had an initial input x, if I added 2 to it, how would I undo that plus 2? Well, you would subtract 2, obviously, wouldn't you, to get back to x. Now, what about if we had an input, I don't know, 3, and then we times it by 4 to get 12? How would we undo that times 4 to get back to 3? Well, we would divide it by 4, wouldn't we? So the inverse of timesing by 4 is dividing by 4. And then what about squaring? If we had 3 and then we squared it, so that input squared, we would get 9, wouldn't we? Then how would you undo that squared to get back from the 9 to the 3? Well, you would square root it, wouldn't you? So you'd square root that input and the 9 square rooted will get you back to 3. Now, what about if we had 3 and we did 2 to the power of that input? Now, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Now, how do we get back from that 8 to the 3? And that's where we have something called logs. So the inverse of 2 to the power of is log base 2 of that input. And we'll explore this a lot more. If we, have, if we do log base 2 of that 8, it gets us back to 3. So that's the whole point of logs. They provide a, an opposite, an inverse to 2 to the power of something or 3 to the power of something. Or they provide an opposite to exponential functions. So the inverse of exponential functions like 2 to the power of something, 3 to the power of something are the logarithmic functions. And similarly, the inverse of the logarithmic functions are the exponential functions. Now let's use that principle to solve these initial questions. We want to evaluate log base 5 of 25. Now I'll firstly show you how to do it on a calculator. If you have a calculator like this, you'll see a log button here. Uh, and there's different log buttons, but we want the one where there's two little squares there. So we do that log. We can see we can put a 5 in the sort of little box and then use our arrow to put a 25 in the big box. And it gives us 2. Now the reason it gives you 2 is because it's asking the question 5 to the power of what gives you 25? Just like here when we had the 8 and we did log base 2 of it, that's asking the question 2 to the power of what gives you 8? What is that missing power there? And we can see it's 3. So 5 to the power of 2 gives you 25. What about the next one? Log base 3 of 81. Well, we ask our question, what's the missing power? 3 to the power of what would give you 81? Well, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. C, log base 2 of 32. We ask ourselves the question, 2 to the power of what is 32? What goes in the middle? 2 to the power of what is 32? Well, it's just 5. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Log base 4 of 1. Well, 4 to the power of what is 1? Well, it's... 0, isn't it? 4 to the power of 0 gives you 1. And in fact, in general, whenever we do log of any base of 1, we always get 0. So that is a key result. What about E? Log base 4 of 4. 4 to the power of what is 4? Well, 4 to the power of 1 is 4, so that gives you 1. So again, another key result that if you do log base, let's say, A of itself, A, it always gives you 1. F, log base 2 of 1 over 16. Well, 2 to the power of what is 1 over 16? Well, notice 1 over 16 is 2 to the power of minus 4. So therefore, the answer is minus 4. 2 to the power of minus 4 will give you a 16th. And then G, it wants us to do this one with a calculator. Log base 3 of 7. Now, we don't always get a nice number. 3 to the power of something is 7. That's not going to be a whole number. However, we can sort of estimate the value because we know that 3 squared would give us 9. So therefore, this result must be slightly less than 2. And let's do it on the calculator to see if that's right. Log base 3 of 7. Yeah, it's 1.77 to 3 significant figures. So it was indeed slightly less than 2. And then finally, log of a 1,000. Now, notice we don't have a little small number here. And this small number, by the way, is called the base. That is called the base of the logarithm. Now, if there's no base specified, then by default, it's log base 10. So we could just put a 10 there. And then we ask ourselves, 10 to the power of what is a 1,000? Well, 10 to the power of 3 is a 1,000. So the answer would be 3. 
And you can actually find that log without the base on your calculator. Depending on your calculator, it might just be above that key there. So if I do shift that, I can see it's a log, but it doesn't have a small number there. And if I put in the thousand, indeed it gives me three. Interestingly, in kind of academic circles, like proper mathematics, uh, when you write log on its own, it actually means log base E. And we're gonna come across log base E and LUN uh, later in the video. Now let's solve these equations in two. We want to solve log base three of x is equal to four. Now, I have two different ways of solving this. I'll present both and then you can choose which method you prefer. Now, one method is just, just sort of like move some stuff around. So remember, log asks the question, three to the power of what is equal to x? And it's saying that answer is four. So I can sort of insert that four into the middle. So three to the power of four is x. And then, well, 3 to the power of 4 is 81, so x is 81. Or the other way of thinking about it is to think about inverse functions. Now, I've got x, and you're doing log base 3 of the x. Now, we want to get rid of that log base 3 on front of the x. So how do we get rid of log base 3? Well, we have to do the inverse function to get rid of stuff. Now, the inverse of log base 3 is 3 to the power of. So if we do 3 to the power of each side, of the equation, 3 to the power of this just, get, just gets rid of the log base 3 to leave x, and then 3 to the power of 4 is 3 to the power of 4, and you get 81. And you can see, like, I've written exactly the same thing, it's just a different way of thinking about it. I can either insert that into the middle of the base and the argument there to get 3 to the power of x, or I can think of it as doing the inverse function of both sides. And what about the next one? Log base 4 of x minus 1, I get 2. Well, if I do it that first method, I can insert that 2 into the middle there. So I get 4 to the power of 2 is equal to x minus 1. Then I just add 1 to both sides. It's 4 squared plus 1 is 17. So the answer is 17. For these next questions, I'm going to have to introduce some laws of logs. Now, we understand what logs are, but we haven't seen ways of kind of combining logs and such. Now, the first law is this, that if I do log of one number, and I add log of another number, I can just times those arguments together. And I should point out these have to be a consistent base. So if this will say base C here, that also has to be base C, and that has to be base C as well. Now, the second law is this. If I subtract two logs, and again, they have to be consistent bases, so they could both be base 10, for example, then you divide those arguments. So it's log of A over B. And the final law of logs is this, that if I have log of something to the power of something, then you can move that power to the front and you end up with B log A. And again, it doesn't matter what this base is as long as that base is consistent with that base there. So 3A, write as a single log. So I've got log 3 plus log 4. And they're both consistent bases, they're both base 10. Um, so I can use this first law here. And you remember when you add two logs, you just times the argument. So the three times four, you get log 12. Part B, I've got two log base three of five minus log base three of four. Again, they're consistent bases. Don't worry what we do if you had different bases. Um, now, in order to be able to use this law here, where we've subtracted two logs, there can't be any number in front of those logs. So somehow I have to get rid of that two. Now to get rid of that two, we could actually use this third law here. Can you see that the power can move to the front? And similarly, this number the front can move to the power. So this two here, we can move initially to the power. So we get log base three of five squared, which is 25. And now, because there's no number in front of the log, we can use this second law here. We're subtracting two logs, so we just divide the numbers. So that would be equal to log base 3 of 25 over 4. And that would be the final result. We've managed to write this as a single logarithm. Now, this one is harder, but using the same laws of logs. We've got log base 2 of x plus 15 minus log base 2 of x equals 6. And we need to first show that we can write this as x squared minus 34x plus 225 equals 0. So there's a quadratic. 
So again, we want to combine this into a single log so that we can solve it. So let's move that 2 on the front to the power. So we get log base 2 of x plus 15 squared minus log base 2 of x equals 6. And then we can use this second law of logs here. We've got a subtraction here, so we divide those two arguments. So it's log base 2 of x plus 15 squared over x is equal to 6. And now we've got a single log, so we can get rid of the log. So we can do that in the same way we did uh, these questions in part 2. We can just insert that 6 into the middle here, between the base and the argument of this log. So we get 2 to the 6 is equal to x plus 15 squared over x. And now we're on the home straight because we don't have any logs left in our equation. So now 2 to the 6 is equal to 64, and we can times by that x to get this. And then as you can imagine, we're going to expand out this bracket. So if I do that, I get x squared plus 30x plus 25. And then put it all on one side. x squared plus the 30x minus the 64 gives you minus 34x plus the 225 equals 0. And indeed, that is the result that we were trying to show. And then part B is hence or otherwise solve that equation, which is the same as the original equation. So we can just solve this in order to solve that. So we're allowed to just use our quadratic solver directly, if it's an A-level exam anyway. So I'm going to use my quadratic solver, and that gives me x is 25 or x is 9. Now I should point out we should always check whether these solutions actually satisfy the original equation because it's possible, for example, you might have, say, log of x minus 15 here and if you put the 9 into it, you'd have log of 9 minus 15, you'd have log of a negative number, but you can't do logs of negative numbers. Both satisfy the equation because you'll have log of a positive number here because 25 plus 15 is log of a positive number and you have log of x, log of 25 or log of 9. That's absolutely fine. So both of these will be solutions to that equation. And then finally, we want to solve these equations involving exponentials. So, we firstly got 3 to the power of x is equal to 20. How do I get rid of that 3 to the power of in front of the x? Well, we do the inverse function of 3 to the power of. The inverse of 3 to the power of is log base 3. So I'm going to do log base 3 of each side of the equation. That gets rid of the 3 to the power of, leaving just x. And then I do log base 3 of the right-hand side. So you have log base 3 of 20. And that you will need a calculator for because it's not going to be a whole number. And that gives me 2.73 to three significant figures. What about the second one? 4 to the 5x minus 1 is 60. Now, we want to get rid of that 4 to the power of in front of the 5x minus 1. So we do the inverse of 4 to the power of, which is log base 4. So that gets rid of the 4 to the power of, leaving 5x minus 1. And we've got to do log base 4 of 60. And now we can just add 1 to get rid of that minus 1 there. The only reason I put that 60 in brackets, so it doesn't look like log base 4 of 60 plus 1. It's log base 4 of 60 plus 1, with the plus 1 outside of that log. And then finally, we just divide by 5. And we put that all into the calculator, and we get 0.791 to three significant figures. What about C? This is a bit harder. You might be tempted to either do log base 3 of both sides or log base 2 of both sides, because log base 3 would get rid of that 3 to the power of, log base 2 would get rid of that 2 to the power of. But there's nothing consistent we can do to both sides which will get rid of both. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to do a sort of generic log without a base. So we just do log of both sides, but we don't care about the base. Now I know that log without a base specified means log base 10, but the fact is the base doesn't matter. As long as we're doing log the same base of both sides, it won't matter. Now that allows us to use some laws of logs. So we've got an instance of this where we can move the power to the front. So I can move the x to the front, and we can move the x plus 1 all in brackets to the front here. And then it sort of becomes a changing the subject problem where you've got x appearing multiple times. So if I expand out that bracket on the right, because I've got x times log t, 
plus 1 times log t. And then do you remember, if the x appears multiple times, you isolate all the x terms on one side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract that x log t, because then that enables me to factorise out the x, and then I can just divide both sides by that bracket. So I get x is equal to log t over log 3 minus log 2. And I could put that into my calculator and it would use base 10. And I could use any base I want, but as long as all these bases are consistent, you'll actually get the same result. And then this very last question in this video, we've got 2 to the x times 3 to the x plus 1 is equal to 5. Now, this is even more unobvious what you do, but I'm again just going to do log of both sides, and we don't care about the base, but by default it would be base 10. Now this, because we've logged it, allows us to split it up because we can use various laws of logs here. So we've got log of something times something, that's this thing here. So we can write it as log of the first thing plus log of the second thing. So I can do that here. So we've got log of the first thing in that product plus log of the second thing in that product. And that is equal to log 5. And now, look, we've got a power here, so we can use this third law here. We can move the power to the front, so move that x to the front, x log 2, plus, and we can move that whole power of x plus 1 to the front in a bracket. The bracket is important. And then it's very similar to the question we had before. So if we just expand that bracket out, and then, as before, we just need to isolate all the x terms on one side. So we've already got all the x terms on the left, but that's not an x term, so we need to subtract it to get it to the other side. And then because we've isolated all the x terms on one side, we factorise that x out, and then we divide by that whole bracket. And that is the final result. We could again put that in our calculator, but if they wanted the exact result, that would be the answer that you give. I suppose if you wanted to, you could simplify this into a single log. So that would be log of 5 over 3. And the bottom would be log 2 plus log 3 is just log 6. But I'm not convinced that that looks simpler than that, because you've got a fraction within a fraction, which is not ideal. So that probably is the simplest way of writing it.